So which chicken tastes better? The Cornish Cross or the Red Ranger? I'm about to find out. So right here I got two of our small chickens from each batch. I got this Cornish Cross. He was only in at about two and a half pounds. And I got this Red Ranger that also was about two and a half pounds. We're gonna get both these things cooked up the exact same style on a very simple recipe that I have found to work fantastic for cooking a chicken in the oven. And it's so basic, anybody can cook it this way. But we're gonna do them both the same. And then we're gonna do a little blind taste test with Mrs. Rocky Creek and Madison to see which one they like the best. The hardest thing in this though is gonna be me making sure that I keep track of which one's which. But the good thing is they look so differently, especially in the dark meat, I think it'll be pretty easy to keep them apart. So let me show you what this quick and simple recipe is. We'll get them popped in the oven and then we'll see what their opinions are when it's all said and done on today's dinner. So I love this recipe because you only need very simple ingredients. You just need black pepper, salt, this is pink Himalayan salt, and onion powder, some celery, some scallions or green onions, and some butter. You don't need to measure. Technically, you can measure the butter, but I just kind of eyeball it, and I'm gonna show you how we do it right here. All right, so we got both chickens here. And like I was saying is, is that this is like a super, super simple little quick recipe for the chickens. I've cooked it this way twice for us since we've harvested our own, and the family's loved it. So first we're gonna start off, we're just gonna sprinkle the bird down both inside and out with all three of these, the pink Himalayan salt, onion powder, and black pepper, or you can just use regular salt if that's all you have. We're gonna do it all over it, inside and out, and then we're just gonna shove the cavity with some butter and what I got here on the plate. So I'll show you how simple it is. And I don't have a roasting pan, but that's all right. I've just been doing it in these pans. The only time it becomes difficult is if it's a really big bird then it's harder to get it to it. But I don't do any measurement. I just sprinkle each one down with all the ingredients. And then I'll kind of rub it all in at one time after I get it all sprinkled down. Okay, so there's salt. Hit it with some pepper. This is Rocky Creek, must be getting hungry. I hear her belly growling from here. All right, then we come back with the onion powder. I like doing the pan because we're gonna put butter and that's gonna make a lot of juice down in the bottom of this and we're gonna baste it after it's done with. We're gonna ladle that back on it. So it really just flavors up all that butter real good put it on it. Just kind of press that seasoning in good. Now this is where it just gets even easier. So I have some of the older butter first and we'll split it up and don't be bashful with it. Just get it plugged in there. So basically I just do two chunks of butter inside the cavity. Then you just grab a couple pieces of celery. I always end up with more. You usually can't fit much and these birds are pretty small. So we're not gonna be able to get much in them. So there's nothing perfect to it. Just get some in there. I don't know what this does. Honestly, when I saw the recipe the first time, I thought, well, that's not a whole lot. That's not gonna put a lot of flavor but I have found that it works fantastic. We're gonna take a couple of these green onion sprigs. Same thing as with the celery, just gonna shove it on in there. Might be able to get a little more celery in each one. My guess is, is that celery retains a lot of moisture and maybe that helps to moisten the meat. I don't really taste the celery when we cook it, which is good because I'm not a big celery fan, but something about it just works out really well. Then the last thing you gotta do is just take you a little bit more butter. And 
And all we're going to do, if you get the soft organic butter, it's even easier. Like this came right out the fridge, but it's still good and soft. And you're just going to set it. Little dollops. I like to tuck it in each of the legs and up on the chest cavity. And that usually works out pretty good. So that's it. We're going to throw it in the oven. It's going to need to cook for about an hour and 15 minutes. I'm going to put a thermometer in it, though. That's going to let us know. We're going to cook these things exactly, and then we're going to get them cut up and do a little taste test. two good looking birds. Now we gotta baste them and let all that juice soak in for about 30 more minutes. So all we do now is we're gonna baste all this butter. If you have enough, you can use a spoon and ladle it on. I find just brushing it on. And what I'll do is throughout the 30 minutes is I'll just come back in here and I'll keep brushing it back on probably about three different times, so about every 10 minutes or so. I'll come back by here and I'll try to get some inside and I just kinda Rehydrate it, but we're gonna let that meat rest real good and get them all done up, but nothing better than some pasture raised, good, healthy, organic chicken right here in our house. He is so cute. All right, so these birds have been resting for about 30 minutes now and we've basted them a few times. So what I'm gonna do is, they're occupied. So I'm gonna cut, well, I'm gonna cut a little bit of white meat and dark meat from both, put them on two different plates, and we'll let them try a piece and see if they like one better than the other, or if they can even tell a difference between the two of them. That meat is so juicy using this recipe, I'm telling you, it's awesome. Look at that, super tender, super delicious. All right, so I peeled the skin away from each one, so it's just the meat itself, so hopefully I wouldn't influence it, but hopefully you could see how tender and juicy it is when you do this recipe. I mean, this stuff is just, it's so juicy down in there. Um, it was actually kind of hard to get dark meat off of the Cornish Cross because it's so little bit, where the Red Ranger just got a pile of it. Now, interesting because my wife and daughter, they're big white meat people. They usually just eat the white meat, and I'm usually the guy eating the legs and the thighs and all that, so. I'm definitely a dark meat guy, but we're going to get them in here. We're going to get them to try it, and we're going to see if they like one better than the other. All right, so how we're going to do this is we got some dark meat from the first chicken and some white meat. I so I want you to pull a little piece off of each one okay. and give it a try. Okay. Miss Rock Creek going for the white meat first. Madison went for the dark meat. Mm. Is it good? You go eat the whole piece now? All right. Yeah. Now here, finish up that dark piece and then try a piece of the white meat of, like, that, of that chicken. I like the white meat. I already know what it tastes like. Well, no, but the, these are two different types of chicken. So you need to try each one and you're going to let me know which plate you like better. Yeah, this is plate one. Yeah, so this is plate one. It's a whole plate versus a whole nother plate. So you can try each chicken. Both of these came from one type of chicken from different parts. And you're going to try meat from a whole nother chicken in a minute. Oh. Um, Make sense? Okay, so we established that you at least liked it. That's good. All right, did you try the white meat? Mm -mm. You have to try to remember what it tastes like. Okay. It has a squishy body. 
I know the squishy. <laughs> Means juicy. Texture. What you call squishy, I call juicy. Still good? Mm -hmm. All right. Good. I like both of them. So that's plate one. That's from the same chicken bone. No well, if anything, at least we know they like it. That, that's one good thing. Now let's see if there's a difference between the two. Uh-huh. Right. I'm like so scared right now. There's plate number two scared. from another type of chicken. Let's the white meat hole. and the dark meat. That's just where the thermometer was in. A hole and another hole. I'm going to go for the hole. You're going for the white meat first? On plate two. Are they on plate three? No, just there's only two types of chicken that I raised. Oh. Any difference at all? No. I, I think so. She thinks there's a difference. I don't think so. You just know that they're all good, right? Mm -hmm. That's all that matters to you. Did you try the white meat too? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try the dark yeah. meat. Do you need to compare them again or are you pretty confident? No, I'm confident. All right, so did you like plate one or plate two better? Plate one. So she likes plate one. Mm -hmm. Do you have a preference? Or you just like them all? I like plate two, the dark meat. You like the dark meat on plate two? Mm -hmm. the, the last one that you just had? Mm -hmm. And I like plate one better both. I like the flavor better. All right, we got a tie. We got Mrs. Rocky Creek likes plate one, all of it better. And then we got Madison thinks they're just all good, but she likes the dark meat on plate two better. So now I'm gonna give them a try because I haven't tried them side by side and see if there's any difference here. All right, so of course I know which ones are which, but I haven't tasted one directly after the other. I'm kind of like Madison. Usually I just think they're all good. But... And this time I'm gonna have another piece of white meat. Okay. I'm gonna do straight white to white first. Then I'm gonna go dark, dark. Is there a difference? All right, dark, dark meat on plate one. I love that dark meat. So good. I know. It's really good. Right. Yeah, plate two. Dark meat dark on meat. plate two. It's like so good. See, is it so good? I love it. Do not eat this piece. <laughs> I got a little conundrum. What? I actually like the dark meat on plate one better. But I like the white meat on plate two better. What? Yeah, it's crazy. Mind blown. Can I give Chloe some dark meat? Hold on. Chloe, which one? Plate one? Plate two. Wait, which one was plate two? Did you like plate one? That was good? <laughs> All right, plate two, dark meat. All right, here. Here's plate two. Which one? That one might have had less chews. You might have been a plate two girl. I'm not sure. You're just like, where's more? Give me more. All right, so to give y'all an idea of which is which, um, so Mrs. Rocky Creek was a plate one. She liked plate one better all around. Plate one is the Cornish cross. That's the white chickens. And Miss Madison said they're all good, but she liked the dark meat better on plate two, which is a Red Ranger. Shockingly for me, I liked the dark meat on the Cornish cross, which breaks my heart because it just doesn't have a lot of dark meat. I guess maybe it's better quality for less of it. I don't know. Um, but I actually definitely like the breast meat on the Red Ranger, which same problem. There's less of it on the Red Ranger. So I'm kind of messed up anyway. So I'm thinking that the conclusion of this whole thing is this probably didn't help you out a whole lot in terms of which one is gonna be better overall. But at the end of the day, they're all pretty good and you can't go wrong if you raise them yourself. So this probably lets you down because you were probably hoping for a clear cut winner one versus the other. So for me though, if there's not a major difference, I would probably still lean towards a Red Ranger because I'm a dark meat guy and there's just so much of it on it. Although the Cornish Crosses was so good and it's got these little teeny legs. So we're gonna get some dinner made up though. We're gonna finish up the dinner because obviously we're gonna eat this for dinner. We got plenty of it. We're gonna throw some other things with it and we're gonna sit down and have us a good meal Are you gonna as a family. So guys, that's gonna wrap everything up for today. We're gonna to sit down and enjoy some pasture raised chicken here on the property, some cucumbers from the garden. Mm -hmm. I love pierogies. I don't know how to make them homemade, so I still buy them at the store. So yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make that part of it up. But uh, 
No, so I don't think this is going to probably help you out in terms of if Cornish crosses or Red Rangers are best, but the only thing I can tell you is obviously you can't go wrong with any because one likes Cornish cross the best completely. The other one likes partially the Red Rangers, and I'm stuck in the middle between the two. I like one meat of one and the other meat of the other, so you can't go wrong with either one, but we appreciate y'all hanging out here with us in the house today, and we'll see you here, as always, real soon on the next video. Y'all be good. Bye. Yeah, I, like I love these. All the pierogies? Uh -huh. Yeah, they're pretty good.